When I began actually building out this single family home in the Bridgeview neighborhood, I was actually quite conflicted. I felt a little bit defeated from the last build, but the good news here is just that I had to revisit what my large vision is for the Bridgeview neighborhood here. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I'll share in just a bit. For those of you just discovering my little corner of the internet and just getting to know me, my name is Michael and I want to welcome you to Sovereign Gaming in Life Sims, the YouTube channel where I build worlds, lots, and share my thoughts on video games in the life simulation gaming space. Now, when it came to the last episode, I felt a little bit defeated because the whole purpose of the Bridgeview neighborhood was to provide housing options for Sims that were created just from the Create a Household tool. So it had to be housing that would be affordable and, you know, designated as your starter neighborhood. As you would have seen on screen, there are a lot of options when it came to the different housing for the, or well, different lots, I suppose. And most of those lots are actually designated as housing. And I knew going right into this build that it was going to be something that would be above the budget of Sims that are just created straight from the create a household tool. So I already kind of knew that I was doing an uphill battle and there's just going to be no way that this single family home was going to be affordable for a single sim that was just created from the create a household tool like I mentioned a little earlier. I think I might have repeated myself so I hope you guys can forgive me there. But yeah, um, so that's when I got to thinking like what the Bridgeview neighborhood is really about. I've mentioned it many times, but I totally intended the Bridgeview neighborhood to be that starter neighborhood where players can just, you know, grab a family or grab a single sim from their uh, save bins and just throw them in a, a lot in a house and just start playing the world right away. And to be honest, that's still going to be the vision that I look for when actually developing this neighborhood. And I think that the thing that had me so conflicted at the time was just the fact that I had to create an additional apartment block tower for a single sim to afford. But I also kind of forgot that the um, that the vision for Bridgeview is much larger than what I was giving it credit for. So. In the beginning of this episode, you would have seen all of those residential lots like ready for me to develop. And it has always been a part of the vision for me to develop these single family home lots um, as either single family homes or duplexes or even maybe triplexes if the build actually calls for it. And so that's what I was really forgetting here is that this house is indeed going to be a single family home and by the end of the build it ends up like selling for 40,000 simoleons even with an unfinished basement and I was okay with that and I'm gonna tell you why. So when it comes to like regs to richest gameplay I do want to offer the option to actually I know I talk about regs to riches a lot but I do want to actually offer the proper economic uh, runs to a ladder so to speak for sims to actually climb in terms of wealth and uh, status and all of that and this home itself even though it is technically in the starter neighborhood it would be like that second run that your sim would have to climb if they are looking to amass wealth and actually looking to uh, better themselves in terms of um, you know growing in economic class and all that. So this house really retails again for 40,000 simoleons, which is well above that any kind of uh, simoleon amount that Sims are designated when they are created straight from the create a household tool. Um, I believe that, I don't know what the maximum is for eight Sims, but for two Sims, I believe that their budget is set at like 22,000 simoleons. So it's roughly double from what a couple can afford straight from the Sim bin, uh, straight from the create a household tool, granted that they don't have any more wealth. Of course, there are cheats out there, like the free real estate cheat that Simmers can use if they so choose to, but 
You know, I really had to make peace with the fact that this is that second run in the ladder. So with saying that, I still wanted to try and keep this house as cheap as possible. I kept it as a bungalow and even though in this neighborhood I'm going to have some duplexes and also some two-story single family homes, um, I still want to try and keep it as cheap and as affordable as possible so that Sims uh, that are working a couple of jobs, maybe living in an apartment, can afford this within a relatively short time. Like maybe they get a couple of promotions and by the end of the week or even for a week and a half from now, just from earning money, they might be able to actually afford this uh, after, selling their, uh, after selling their apartment or something of the sort. And with the vision of Bridgeview, there are many lots on here, many plots of land for me to develop, and I know for a fact that there will be a mix between these two blocks of single family homes and duplexes. And I have done some play testing before, and when it comes to developing duplexes, that's where a lot of single sims or even like just a couple of sims can start to afford a lot more houses or a lot more options there with those duplexes, just because um, when I set things to being like, when I use the public marker, it significantly lowers down the price. It's also why I'm choosing not to furnish all of the rooms. And that's kind of where a little point of confliction comes into is that I gave this house a basement and I decided to leave the basement as unfinished. And I also gave it a second bedroom and I also decided not to furnish the bedroom or to decorate it in any shape or form. I did that for two reasons. One, I wanted to make this house as cheap as possible for simmers and players. And the second reason is that I also think that it would be, it would be okay. F um, <laughs> I, I think that it allows the house to find its own function and form with each player. And I felt that that was okay for the starter neighborhood homes. Now, when it comes to uh, building mansions, like you would have seen with the uh, Chateau uh, Crumple Bottom Mansion build, I'm obviously going to furnish all of the rooms. Nothing's going to be left unfinished there. And same goes with all the Blue Water Village homes. And those, as you will see, will be uh, like sometime in the future, will be very expensive to actually buy. Usually, like I've done suburban house builds before, fully furnished, and they usually go for around like 200,000 simoleons. So there's a pretty big price jump between what you can afford in the starter neighborhood versus what you could afford in Blue Water Village. But we'll have to see if that actually comes true. I'm just talking on past experience. But something that you guys should know about these lots is that these are custom sized lots. I believe they are like a 20 by 45, like 20 width and then 45 squares um, tall and it's a custom size that I chose and this was one of the very few things that I was actually able to test before the uh, editing game function in my creator world tool stopped working on me and I was thankfully able to test like what these kind of uh, like what kind of lot sizes I needed for these types of houses so the type of house that I am trying to build I'm going to put a screenshot of where I'm getting my inspiration from because I actually don't know what the architectural style is called and I will be scheduling a community post that will be asking you guys for a little help on identifying the actual style there because I love the style. I wish I had access to like actual floor plans and stuff like that but um, I have no idea what they're called and I just can't seem to find them when I am Googling and all that. So some community help can be uh, much appreciated. Of course, you can leave a comment in the uh, comment section below, but I'm also going to be posting a community uh, post just in case um, anybody who chooses not to watch this video sees it and might know the answer. So I'm happy to learn new things once in a while. <laughs> But yeah, um, for this neighborhood, I really wanted that skinny narrow house with a garage in the back to just kind of suggest like there's a laneway. In The Sims and in Create a World, it is kind of hard to actually convey a proper laneway, um, but I really like the look that there is a house that is closer to the sidewalk and it has a laneway of some sort and it's a house that is much longer than it is wide and that's exactly what I wanted in terms of the look and feel. For the rest of the neighborhood, like I said, 
despite it being like a mix of duplexes and stuff, is just going to either be bungalows or two stories. Um, but across the street from this one, I am going to explore uh, some triplex options there too. So how do you make a duplex or a triplex? Well, it's quite simple actually. Um, this episode won't be a great example of it, but um, just with the way that the Sims 3 game mechanics work, in my opinion, the best way to do it is just to make it like a any regular apartment. And with that, it's just like a mix of using public markers, hidden rooms, and then making sure that you have the multiple mailbox in there from the buy debug mode and also um, a way to call the neighbors through one of those electronic boxes and that's really going to that's really the bread and butter of making apartments i'm not actually going to change any of the lots into an apartment type lot because that spawns roommates and roommates are an absolute mess in this game and i don't have any mods uh, that corrects their behavior so i have given up on that and i don't even want to experiment with mods um, because i feel like as soon as you start like changing some behaviors like that it could glitch your game pretty bad but that's just me anyways. The biggest problem when it comes to actually creating duplexes and triplexes, and again, today I'm just doing a single family home, I'm not doing a multi-housing um, duplex, but one of the biggest problems with the Sims 3 game mechanics is just that it overspawns too many NPCs and townies that live in the duplex or triplex, and in my opinion, there's really no way around it. I'm sure there might be like some sort of NROS setting out there that I can adjust or whatever, but you know, I'm not about to break my game trying to find out and then losing a series here when I have many more lots to build. <laughs> but anyways, that's one of the problems um, when trying to build duplexes or triplexes. The other problem is actually trying to designate which areas of the home uh, are public with the public marker and which areas of the home are hidden so that neighbors have a place to hide and then, you know, how you assign the NPC door and all that. So that's that becomes more of an issue on duplex uh, builds triplex builds and also townhouse builds because they each have their own private entry now the way that i found around this and part of why i made the lot sizes the way that they are in the create a world tool is because i wanted to give it like a little bit of a porch this build is a bit of a bad example for it because i have opened up the porch and um you know sims can just walk up and all of that <laughs> but in the duplex builds i'll be closing off that porch with like screen windows and stuff much like what you see in the backyard just to try and actually create a proper uh room within that and then mark it as a public room maybe i'd mark something in the foyer space and um you know assign the doors there and assign which parts of it belong to your sim and which parts belong to their duplex neighbors. So that's kind of the plan going forward there with the duplex build. And we won't be returning back to Bridgeview for a while, so just kind of uh, slot that idea into the back of your mind there. I'll explore a little bit um, more when it comes to building out neighborhoods and building out homes and all that with you guys, because um, I have a couple of directions that I could take, but that is way far down the road. But yeah, um, the duplex builds I'm very excited for, and I have to do something similar like with that strategy for the uh, for townhouses as well, but that's going to really depend on the make and model of the townhouse uh, to get the neighbors spawning in properly and all of that. But yeah, um, aside from that, if you are noticing that this house kind of looks ugly, well, guess what? I felt so confident with my 90s builds from the last uh, two towers that I had built, just kidding of course, that I decided that what would be even better is if I tried the 60s. <laughs> so this house is very much inspired by the 60s and basically what my research has shown from the 60s to be. Again, I'm trying to choose like the cheaper uh, counters and appliances just to try and keep the cost of this house down uh, low. And also I am choosing the uh, choosing not to fully furnish the house, leaving a bedroom and the basement as unfinished. But I have decided indeed to try another decade <laughs> when it comes to decorating. And 
we'll just have to see because um, I think it turned out better than my 90s one. I will give it that. But the bathroom ended up just looking the same. Maybe I should have just picked a different color. But <laughs> the elements are there in terms of like, according to my research, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of like bright, bold colors. They still try to warm up the bathrooms a little bit, like with textures and stuff in the 60s just from my research and you know I've obviously never lived in that era but uh <laughs> I was really short on inspiration for like home decor for the 60s there was only one thing that I found that was very inspiring and that was actually the kitchen it was that awful olive green that I know triggers some players out there and I decided to lean right into that trigger <laughs> if it was accurate for the time I decided to place it in there I actually didn't mind how the dining room and the living room turned out. I thought that it was acceptable in terms of it being like inspired by the 60s. And for once, like the 60s, 70s, or sorry, the 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff. This is 60, uh, the 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff pack actually kind of came in handy when it came to the TVs. Um, even though it might be like more 70s than it is 60s, I felt that it was fine to place in here too. There's also like questionable choices in carpet as well, or like where the carpet actually appears. So made those questionable choices here as well. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, again, when it comes to the styling and interior decorating, I'm just having a little bit of fun, like trying to decorate from uh, a place that's outside of my comfort zone, in this case, trying to decorate after a decade and doing it after the 60s slash 70s was definitely out of my comfort zone. And, um, you know, the 90s was way out my comfort zone as well, but I still did it. And when I come to actually building out these single family homes and duplexes, and honestly, it's gonna be a mix between these two streets um, in my world, I'm going to be experimenting a little more with certain styles here and there, but then I'll also revert back to like modern interpretations and contemporary styles too. So it's not necessarily, um, yeah, again, the goal is to try and like individualize each of the houses while also trying to make them as, uh, as cheap and affordable as possible for a starter neighborhood. And I think that's why this is going to end up being one of my favorite uh, neighborhoods to build in is because there's an actual challenge that I'm trying to meet when it comes to the player experience. When I had built the prototype to model these houses after, and yes, I have saved those screenshots since like September pretty much, the house was actually a lot more narrower. And I really thank my past self for doing this because what I did was I built the house that I wanted to build on you know, the largest lot, and then I measured out what I needed. But when I went to actually um, build the Bridgeview neighborhood, what I had smartly did was I just increased both the width and the height by one and built out the neighborhood and the road layout from there. So that really, you know, that's gonna really work well in my favor, I am predicting, because when it came to trying to uh, build a duplex in the prototype version, um, it was looking very tight in terms of how narrow it was going to be. And now that I have this like huge foyer space, well, you know, I call it huge, but it's really, <laughs> it's really probably quite small compared to some of the houses that you guys are building or playing with. But with that larger foyer space, I have a lot more flexibility to actually put in like a second set of stairs for the two stories and um, expanding out that public room so that it isn't so um, crowded because it was looking a little cramped, a little crowded when it was just the porch area that was going to be used as a public area for, you know, your neighbors to access whenever they were leaving their uh, unit or whatever. So the lot sizes themselves were actually much larger. Well, not much larger. I Like I said, I only extended it by like one square um, on each side, but it made such a huge difference. Um, so yeah, I was very impressed with that. And I really love how the layout for this house turned out. Again, because layouts were different back in the day, I tried to adhere to there being more hallways and using the arches 
and you know going against that open concept i don't get me wrong i love an open concept once in a while but i also feel like having proper rooms that you can close off and make private like there's a time and a place for everything and i felt like for this build the time and the place was correct in terms of it not having an open um an open concept and i'm actually pretty much going to feel the same way for these kind of builds uh going forward but you know to help break the mold a little bit i'm gonna have to uh <laughs> i'm really gonna have to look into uh developing and designing like what an open concept version of this type of house would actually be like and how it would function so i'm very excited for these kind of builds like i mentioned before another thing that the sims 3 and the sims 2 doesn't do very well is closets and it kind of annoys me I like on one hand, <laughs> you know, designing for a closet space would be a bit of a challenge for me because I'm not used to it. But having like official closet objects, whether it is something from the Sims 3 store, maybe I'm just not looking hard enough if I'm going to be honest. But having something like that would go a long way to actually making these rooms feel interesting. Again, I'm doing the bare minimum when it comes to the bedrooms for this build just because I want to try and keep the cost down as low as possible, but I feel like you have to put in a dresser and, you know, a light and of course like a double bed in order for the bedroom to actually feel like a bedroom. <laughs> Surprise. But yeah. Um, so yeah, this is actually going to make the last spot build episode that I am going to do. Um, the next episode that I will be editing and recording and still having to do at this point in time is I'm going to be doing another edit episode, much like how I did the Old Town edits. It might be a shorter episode, however, uh, there are some edits that I think are significant and they would help to explain why the lots look like they do by the time you guys uh, get it in your hands. But yeah, this really does conclude the last bit of spot building that I wanted to do for the city before I release it and the lots uh, that correspond with it as well. Um, so what's really next going forward is that editing episode that I mentioned, but as soon as I have the trailer for the Sim City World published on my channel, that's when the world will be released along with the uh, different lot uploads. Again, when I actually export the Sims 3 world, uh, sorry, the Sim City world, it's going to be a blank slate and then you, the player, will have to download the lots if you like my lots that I've built and then, you know, populate your world with them as I continue to build up the Sim City world and to make those lots available for you guys. So that is the plan going forward. Just look out for that trailer. I am... I hate to be uh, stringing you along here, but I'm not promising you a date in this video only because um, only because by the time you receive uh, by the time you watch this, it'll either be late February or March. And I'm not even sure um, if I'm going to be able to get the Sims 3 world, uh, sorry, the Sim City world exported yet and available to download uh, to a quality that I want it to be downloaded as. Right now it's only January, so I still have to like really hunker down and um, and yeah, figure out the technicalities around that. So that's why I'm not promising a date here. And I do apologize uh, for being a little coy with the release date of the first version of SimCity. But I promise you that by the time you watch this video that it'll be like <laughs> the release will be right around the corner for that so again i do apologize for not promising a date but that's just kind of the way the the cookie crumbles at this point but yeah back to the build here this build in fact like the sim city world is really great for a rags to riches play but this is this build definitely felt like the next run on the ladder when it comes to climbing that uh when it comes to participating in that rat race and you know, you have, like, it doesn't look like it on here, and maybe it's just because I came from doing the one-bedroom lot build 
from the uh, from the towers, but there's just so much space to play with, so much space for players to actually use. There's a whole unfinished basement just with this bungalow alone. So, you know, it, it feels very um, it feels very appropriate for it to function like that next run in the ladder and. I ended up really loving the form that the house took and based on the inspiration that I had, I felt like I was pretty accurate to it. Of course, I want to now build a two-story version of it to be even more accurate and even a duplex just to show you guys that it can be done. Um, but that's just where we're going to have to leave it for today. In the future, like what you guys can look forward to is of course like that editing episode. You can look forward to the trailer releasing sometime soon after uh, this episode. But where I'm gonna take the series is we are gonna make a return back to downtown because there is a green patch of, uh, a green patch in the middle of downtown with a set of lots on it that are just screaming to be developed on. So I've gotta tend to that and finish off the downtown core before moving on to other neighborhoods. Anyways, that will about do it for today's episode. I just want to take a minute here to say thank you so much for watching. For those of you that have stuck around with the series and have commented and liked this video and all that, you guys are heroes. Um, I know it's <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> overdoing it in terms of the thank yous there, but it has really um, it has been really inspiring and it has really like helped me and all that jazz. So I just wanted to say thank you so much you're like i appreciate you guys for watching honestly but yeah if you know if you enjoyed this video and if you've been enjoying this series then feel free to like this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already that's why i say feel free to because you're not in any way shape or form obligated to like or you know subscribe if you don't want to your time is precious after all anyways Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.